牌啊，前面啊，哇，我们我我我 want to approach this topic and not make a total ass of myself. So I'm not gonna even really get into any rhetoric or anything like this. It's just flat out. Now, as for people with the whole you know secular community, secular crowd, the atheists and um, agnostics alike, or even there's even people who are have a religion and they see um secular reasoning for morality as cool and something that could be useful. For a whole society, especially since we want everyone to live together and not want to kill each other, because their one's、um, moral philosophies conflict with the other, and others' differences. I mean, people are going to do it anyway. But we're going to, our I guess our job is to developing this some、um, frame, this moral framework. As to the whole Sam Harris thing put it, it's to um. Kind of put it to the point where, when someone does do something out of you know out of the context of what's moral, what's right, and what's wrong,、um, what's what's proper punishment? Have they really done anything wrong? How how do we determine? Now there's lots of people who are subject to this, who would、um, who completely object to the word morality and objective. Being in the same sentence, I could all I could see that point of view because I have been on that on that side of the fence before, and I I I do even though even from as I stand now I still there's certain parts where we could say that it's a little some of it is up for subjective choice, but in this one state we see we see especially through through our through knowledge of um. Of our new of our neurological background and how everything works within us, like things like um free will are an illusion. You've made a decision. A lot of studies and things have been done, experiments shown that people make decisions to do things or to not do things as soon as they hear them before they even have time to contemplate whether they will or they won't. And there are certain, just like those who are really impulsive. It's just it's a whole thing goes through your nervous system and by way of your brain already from your um it's like the sensory receptors, you know, this that that you know that you know you make your own decisions things like that based upon these things, and it just happens like that. Now, the only time when we do see us take the time to really sit down and truly tackle a problem, most times is when we sit back and instead of going with that that decision that's already been made, we go, wait, no, maybe, you know, that sort of thing. But as for that, no, it, it, our bodies are somewhat very deterministic. But any way from that. I could say through、um, from one common thing that's known, subjective is based on an objective. Our subjective opinions are based on facts, whether they be factual accounts of our own experience, factual account, factual accounts of how we were raised, factual accounts of、um, what we are, what we believe religiously or whatever. Or factual accounts of being introduced and shown evidence with them of facts. Just like I subjectively think that love is wonderful, even though I do realize that it's nothing but but a rising of of the、uh, brain chemical and horm- hormone serotonin. And um, uh, wow, I, no, it starts with an O. I I don't know if I'm from that. Pronouncing it right, I'm probably gonna look this up later. Annotate it, but um, oxytocin, oxytocin, uh, it's something that causes you this、uh, this attachment. And the explanation behind this is, love is, and you know that sort of that mutual thing with caring is good for social creatures, 
it makes us more it makes us more productive, makes us more predisposed to wanting to reproduce or preserve certain genes and also makes us happier. So, you know, people when they're happier they tend to wanna live longer, they tend to wanna do more. And also in a social construct care is also is also a key factor in driving the lives of individuals and so many other things that I'm not gonna get into. But now since I just how we've explained that subjective is um based on an objective, just like you know, our subjective companions are based on this world. Which is the objective. This is like dependent of our own perception. Ignoring this holy fact that this could all be fake. Ignoring that first. We're gonna ignore that. Go away. This notion's gone. But based on that we could say that okay we can make moral truths based on objective first objective subjective facts just like it's objectively known that just about like a little bit over 90 percent of of, an, of everyone in America is not gonna like it if you punch them in the face man, woman, and child. Now there are outliers. There are outliers who like it either who like it really mostly in a sexual thing. We also have explanations behind those certain fetishes too that I'm not going to get into. I might make a video about that just because I find it funny. But no. So this is a first person fact that when you hit that person they feel pain. But that's only their perception. But we know that it, that it is that way because it's also it's been tested that people feel pain. We have a, a very receptive new, uh, ner of um, a nervous system. Neuro uh, yeah, nervous system. Wow, nervous system, nervous system. Whatever. We have receptive, ner um, receptive nervous system, which we use to interact with the world and we feel pain and pleasure occur accordingly. It's just how it works. So, while using these certain these certain bases of not wanting to cause pain, wanting to maximize pleasure, not wanting to wanting to be just, uh, rather than being unfair, because being unfair maximizes pain. And, and you know, but well, on the uh, from the flip side of that coin, we could say that um, anyone with any sort of mind of odds on thinking this now, well, when we're unfair, doesn't that um bring up? Hey, the, when you're unfair to someone, there's always someone else who benefits. That's the that's one of the main reasons why anyone is acts unfairly, and it's like that's true, but. That that way of achieving pleasure could not be. Well, I don't think that any of us would see that as moral. So we can just rule that out. We want to we want to be just, and we want to maximize pleasure. And, I, and from these two, from if we accept that these two facts are key for society and human well-being, we can make a completely secular and and. A completely secular moral framework that can work for everyone across the board. And we can speak objectively about these subjective facts and draw and draw our how we when we get to those gray situations in real life, how we use them based on these two tenets and the fact that we care about human well being. If anyone objects to this and wants to tell me how I'm wrong, go ahead. 